Good morning, Central. It's great to have you here this morning. Glad for everybody who has joined us here live. Take a moment to sign in and say hello to everybody that you see is here today on this Tuesday morning. I've been gone, actually physically gone, though present uh, on these mornings. And I want to give a shout out to my son, Andy, who said as we were getting ready to go, hey, Dad, you want me to take a couple of those mornings? I said, sure, that'd be great. So uh, thanks to Andy. And I knew you'd be in good hands on those days that uh, he was filling in. Uh, but it's good to be back and good for you to be here as we get this day off to a good start. Have you ever found yourself seeking shelter? And I wonder, where have you looked for shelter in life lately? Yesterday's weather reminded me of the importance of being able to find shelter when it's needed. Carrie and I were in the basement, like a lot of you probably were, keeping an eye on the reports, looking out the windows, glad for the house that we live in, and hoping that it would be enough, and it was. Come to think of it, I've considered the importance of shelter quite a bit these days. We're all trying to shelter ourselves from a virus right now. For some, that means staying isolated at home. For others, it means washing your hands, spraying everything, staying socially distant from people. Places and businesses uh, build shelters, plexiglass dividers, extra doorways, signs to direct people away from one another. That's all in the interest of staying sheltered from a sub-microscopic troublemaker that continues to make the rounds. It reminds me of an event some years ago while at a men's meeting in northern Michigan, I went canoeing for a few hours with a couple of my brothers. We got caught in a heavy, cold thunderstorm and got right off the river. But the only structure around for shelter was an old outhouse. And we took turns waiting out in the rain and in the outhouse, which was very, well, rustic. I'm not sure if it was better to be on the inside or the outside. It kind of reminds me of the measures we take to avoid the coronavirus. It's a real toss-up between standing out in the rain or holding your breath inside the outhouse. Carrie and I just came back from a trip to the Northwest. And every day, every time we went out to visit something, we had to think about sheltering ourselves from ultraviolet rays, from insects, from rain, from wind, from sand, and from theft, bad drivers, and grumpy people. It seems that more and more we need to give thought to staying sheltered from the violence and hatred that's going around. If you're paying attention, the volume level against things that you hold to be true and important is getting turned up a lot. What's going to shelter you, your children, your grandchildren from all the turmoil that's turning up around you. Oh, thanks, Sherm. That's some real encouraging thoughts to start the day with. Well, let's be real for a moment. Shelter doesn't mean much to you if you never need it. If weather was always perfect, if sun didn't burn, if mosquitoes didn't bite, if viruses didn't spread, if sand and thorns didn't scratch, if thugs didn't steal, if swindlers didn't lie, if people didn't make themselves your enemy, shelter from those things would never be a concern. But weather does happen. Sun does burn. Mosquitoes do bite. Viruses indeed do spread. And well, sand and thorns can scratch you up. And worst of all, other people can choose to deceive you, steal from you, and attack you. As long as this is the world we're living in, shelter will always be important to us. We learn to appreciate it from our very earliest days. When David writes Psalm 27, he is writing from the perspective of someone who understands the value of good shelter for life. Think about it. David had been a shepherd. That meant he had dealt with the elements. He had dealt with sheep who needed protection. David also was a warrior. He knew about dealing with an enemy who's trying to kill you, whether he was your father-in-law-to-be, a nine-foot giant, or a son gone rogue. So it's with that insight 
as well as the Holy Spirit's inspiration that he wrote Psalm 27. I want you to look at those words this morning. Maybe commit them to memory. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom will I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. Sure, there's a lot of figurative language in this psalm, but the basic message doesn't need lots of explaining, does it? God is our shelter for life here on planet Earth. We can approach this day with confidence when we recognize that God is the one who will see us through it, whether that's natural disasters, personal crisis, or the enemy trying to make you stumble. As you encounter the things that make you look around for shelter, repeat these words. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Ultimately, he'll bring his people to the place where there won't need to be shelter. That's something I'm looking forward to. and something that can encourage us today. Let me finish by reminding you of Jesus' words concerning the people of Jerusalem. He's actually lamenting their response to him as he says what he does in Matthew 23, 37. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing? Not only do you and I have a wonderful Creator and Savior who provides shelter where we need it in life, but we have one who today wants you to come to Him for the kind of shelter that a mother bird provides for her young under her wings. He longs to gather you there. Let's thank Him for that together today. Father, I do thank you that the kind of love that you express to us meets our greatest needs. Thank you today for these words that you inspired David to write. Reminders to us that you are for us the one who provides shelter in life where we need it. We're reminded of that, Lord, by things as basic and everyday as the weather. We're reminded of it, Lord, as we see turmoil in the word around us, the world around us. We are also reminded of it, Father, as the enemy assails us and tries to make us fall. Lord, we turn to you this day and thank you that with confidence we can repeat those words today. Lord, that you will be uh, our light, our salvation, that we need not fear anyone. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for being here this morning. Take a moment, share this post with somebody on your Facebook timeline. Let's make this a good day and help make it a good day for someone else. Invite them along and we'll see you, Lord willing, tomorrow morning when we say good morning, Central. God bless you. Have a great day.